have to tell you, I have such admiration, respect, and affection for Sarah Hollinshead, who's going to be sharing with us some vital information that I think we can start to employ right now. If any of you that are here have an affinity for what she's saying, you feel like you want to come alongside, I feel like there's some preparatory work that needs to happen here at the Life Center, not just for you. I'm glad you're well-fed and blessed. But there's other people who will not be prepared for this, and we want to be a helping hand. Do you understand? So Sarah's going to come up, and she's going to show us the way to get prepared, um, and we're excited. Uh, if you have questions, and we'll have time for that, just make sure, just let me know. I need to record you. All right, everybody. I'm going to do my best up here today. Just know that if I screw this up, this went flawlessly in my head last night. So you should have been there. All right. Is this is my clicker? Yep, yep. It's going to work. Okay. All right, so like I said, um, if you just want to bow your head and pray with me for a second, pray for me, pray with me, whatever you want to do. <laughs> God, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your presence surrounding us this morning. We pray you would enter into our hearts, open our ears to hear the message that you have sent for us. Lord, give us a sense of peace and simultaneously a sense of urgency that you see fit. God, if there's anything we need to know, please make it abundantly loud and clear. Put it on somebody's heart. Let them raise their hand. Let this be a beautiful discussion between everybody today. God, I pray your spirit up here front and center this morning that I could do your message justice and that it would fall onto the ears that are listening for everybody who has come to diligently prepare just as you've instructed. Amen. All right, I'm going to try to sit so I chill out a little bit. <laughs> all right so this was a little out of my comfort zone of course when Kathy asked me um now looking back at it it does kind of align with something that I had prayed for a little while ago so be very very careful what you're asking for um and I felt like I was the absolute last person for this job because I think I've watched one episode of that zombie show and I'm not a doomsday prepper whatsoever. So I was like, there are so many other people out here who are so much better equipped for this than I am. Um, but I figured maybe that's what made me the best person for the job. It would give me that sense of urgency. And for anybody else out there uh, that's sitting there like me, like, all right, you know, settle down. It's not that big of a deal. We don't have any, you know, impending doom on us. Um, Maybe you'll have that same sense of urgency and maybe some excitement afterwards. So know that I am absolutely no expert on this, but I know there are so many of you out there who have talents and skills and gifts that can benefit this team, this church, and this community in more ways than you can imagine. So maybe we can bring some light to some of that today. So maybe just truly kind of listen to that on your heart. You know, if, if you're feeling something, if you're thinking something, it's not just a coincidence, you know, it's, it's there for a reason. So if there's anything, we really do want this to be a conversation. So if there's anything you have a question about, uh, if there's anything that you can add that maybe I've forgotten, please do not hesitate to raise your hand, to come up to me afterwards. You're not going to offend me. I, I truly do welcome it because we are going to present this again to the community. So any way that you can help to make this better, it's for the betterment of everybody. Yeah. All right, so I have, to, I have to do the clicking. Okay, so I just wanted to start with a little piece of scripture here. Hebrews 11:7. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that becomes by faith. Let that sit for a second. Faith. Faith gives us confidence in the unseen. When we trust in God, we act with his will. And that is being obedient to faith. So thinking about this emergency preparedness plan, um, we have no idea what 
what we're preparing for. So Kathy brought this to me, and this was something that was sitting heavy on her heart. She asked for my help with it. So let's think of Kathy as Noah. I am the construction worker. She's employed. And TLC is the ship of saving grace. So Noah had never seen a flood like what happened. Nobody could have imagined or fathomed what happened. So we are not supposed to know or be able to comprehend necessarily what we are preparing for, but just know that this message was sent for a reason. And there's no reason to panic about anything. I know some feelings of anxiety can arise for people in the unknown, but we've get, been given the opportunity to prepare for this. So listen to that and take that to heart and just actually do the work. So also, you know, remember that the ark wasn't built, you know, in a day or a week. It took, what, 100 years? So, so this isn't saying, you know, something's going to happen this month. It might be 10 months from now. It might be a year from now. It might be, you know, five years from now. But however long it is from now, we've been given that time to prepare. So, again, just being diligent. How many of you have an emergency disaster plan, kit, anything? You got a plan? All right, we got a couple. I have like three hands. So, a lot of you, you know, you've probably never prepared for anything since elementary school or since your kids or have came home from school and they started practicing stop, drop, and roll. So... <laughs> You know, and if you do have a kit, has anybody checked that kit within the last six months? Last year. It's kind of set it and forget it type of thing. So that's some of the tips I'm going to give you guys today um, is that we are going to take the time, prepare for this one step at a time, and give you a plan to keep up with it. So today, just a little bit of the overview of what we're going to be going over. Um, I would like at the end of this for everybody to go home, make a plan, have a family meeting, you know, make it, make it kind of fun, teach your kids about it, talk to each other. Because again, there are so many different scenarios for what could happen. You know, are the kids at school? Are you at work? Are you guys all at home? Is it a fire? Is it a flood? Is it a hurricane? Is it the whole grid going down? You know, nobody can communicate to each other. There are so many different scenarios for what could happen. So we need to just role play some of those. You know, what if you guys are all in the car together? What if one person isn't there? How are you guys going to communicate to each other? So I do not have all the scenarios. Uh, many of you may think of some that we've never thought of. You know, if you want to share those, feel free. If you have any ideas or suggestions on that. Um, but also, I really just want for everybody to go home, and see how this applies to your family. Um, two, we're going to go over um, some car kits and home kits, what to have, some suggestions for that. Please feel free to add to that. Three, stock the pantry. So you guys know how we do the shoe boxes, um, and we bring in those donations throughout the year. So it doesn't all hit at once. It doesn't all hit your wallet at once. That's essentially what we want to do here for TLC. So we're going to talk about preparing your home, preparing your car, but also, again, preparing this ship. If something were to happen, a disaster, you know, we may need to be the hub for some kind of emergency to be able to provide supplies to people. So we want to stock TLC. So just everybody bringing a little bit, one thing at a time. We're going to do some month, monthly donations on that. And then we're going to take it all the way back to gym class and pick some team captains. Um, no pressure on that, seriously. I'm going to have some sign-up sheets at the end. They're not going to be going around now. So they'll be out there, you know, after church in the next couple weeks. So maybe just go home, talk about it, see what your role may be in these situations. But we're going to talk about how we're going to divide all this up if something were to happen and we have to come together as a community. So family plan, I would love to see 
you know, you go home and actually set a date and time. Say, hey, Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m., everybody be here. We're going to talk about some stuff. And, again, just educating. Uh, Kathy has lots and lots of videos. She, she had sent me some, and I'm still digesting some of those. So if anybody else would like to watch those, feel free to reach out to me or Kathy. And it, it gives a much different take on uh, how the world could be impacted in the coming days and years even. So again, just writing down some different scenarios and talking about um, appointing those emergency points of contact. Okay, what if all four family members are involved in this? What if three of us are and one person isn't? Who is that person going to go to? Who are they going to contact when something may happen? So I would appoint some emergency contacts in your family and outside of your family. And who knows phone numbers, you know, that aren't written down in your, if, you're, if you can't use your phone, are you going to be able to call anybody? Whose number do you know? Do you know, yeah, do you know more than one number? Do you know more than five numbers? So actually writing down this plan, having, you know, little note cards, putting that in your kid's backpack, their lunchbox, whatever, in, in a binder, create this binder, put it in a safe. You want to physically write down these contacts so that if power goes down, your phone isn't charged, you don't have your phone for whatever reason, you have access to it and you don't have to panic in these situations. And... Means of communication is another one. If there is no means of communication, where, how are you going to get in contact with each other? You know, we'll talk about it a little bit later on, but if, say, we can't communicate with anybody, we always know, you know, to meet here at 630. So we will have that designated, and you guys will have that information as well. But, but make that same plan for your household as well. Where are we going to meet and what time? It's kind of like, you know, going into the mall and saying, okay, we're going to meet here at the food court at 1 p.m. You know, shopping, grocery shopping. You kind of lose each other. Somebody's not answering their phone, whatever. You always have a meeting place. Um, so I do highly encourage you to write it down, act it out. Make sure it's something that's doable for everybody. Any, any questions, any suggestions so far? Okay. So we're going to move on to home kits. Uh, and I, I told Sean that we will be having a date night at Lowe's Emergency Planning. And he's actually very excited about it. So um, I, I think it would be fun, you know, make this something that you're engaged in, you're invested in. So this is not an exhaustive list. I do encourage you, if you want to take a picture, please feel free to. There is also a link at the bottom of here. Um, I think we'll have this posted somewhere, or I can send you the link, whatever. There is a, a link here at the bottom. If you go to the government website, they have very exhaustive lists of these resources and suggestions. So what our kind of rough game plan is to get one of those very, very large industrial trash cans and create the kit inside of that. You can use that trash can then for water, waste, storage, keep things dry, you know, lots of different things. They float. They, so I do highly recommend making your kit in some type of like Rubbermaid container, trash can, something of that nature. That is what that is for. The rest of the stuff, you know, fit as much as you can inside of it. And when you're preparing for one of these kits, how long are you going to, how much supplies do you need? So at the minimum, we would recommend, uh, or the, the website specifically recommends preparing for a minimum of 24 hours, seven days if possible. I know that can be harder for larger families. Uh, so again, just take that into consideration, which supplies do you need for, you know, seven days at a time? You might only need one change of clothes or, you know, one rain jacket, something like that. Um, but then water, food, making sure you have enough for, for an unidentified period of time. So Kathy and I were discussing water sources. If you cannot get to filtered water, these water bottles uh, that we found, the Berkey water bottle, 
we highly, highly recommend them. It's a travel water bottle and it filters straight through it. So you can fill it up with whatever water it's going to filter through that. You can find those on Amazon. It's between $50 and some of the bigger ones, pricier ones, it might range up to $250 depending on how big or how many you're buying. So those price and, you know, if you go, go to Lowe's and try to buy all this at once, it's, it might be a little intimidating. Um, so maybe this month you just start to set a plan to save, to save, you know, for this or just to purchase one thing at a time. Food, freeze-dried, dried food, canned food, those are going to be, yes, rice, beans, chickpeas. Um, we are planning to do like, you know, one month we're going to do oats. Next month we might do rice. We're going to put it into big five-gallon buckets so that it's stored. And again, you can use those buckets for, you know, whatever resource you need it for. Toolkit, can opener for your canned foods. That is very important. Um, matches, first aid kit, chargers. Chargers for your phone, chargers for any kind of um, other equipments, radios, communication devices. So again, think about what happens if there is no power. Is that charger gonna be useful? Do you have a way to solar charge? Is that something that you want to look into? You know, that way, if you make that one-time investment of getting a solar-powered charging unit, you can use that for lots of different stuff during these uh, events. And, you, you know, gas-powered. What if we don't have access to gas? This, and that's why planning for something like this can be a little overwhelming. But, it, again, it's just meant to shift your mind and think of all the different possibilities. I, w I won't read through everything here on the list. Talk about the radio because not having a satellite, the radio is really important. Radio, just as a means of communication, too, to hear what's going on. If you, you know, you're not going to be able to watch the news and turn the TV on to find out what's going on. So radio as a means of communication and receiving communication, super important. Having batteries that are charged, that are ready to go. And, again, that's the importance of checking this stuff every six months year, you know, something like that to make sure when you go to get it, they're not, they're not dead. They're not rusted. They're not corroded. Just, just maintaining that supply list. Um, generators are something we want to talk about. Who has a generator? Okay. Who? How many people? I didn't really count. <laughs> like a third, <laughs> maybe an eighth. <laughs> um, so Generators are something, we're going to have a sign-up sheet for that. If you don't have a generator and you think you may like one, just put your name and information on the sign-up sheet. We're putting David in charge of finding some information on generators. And whoever else may have some insight on this, what might be the best sources. If we would ultimately like to see if we could buy them somewhere, maybe in bulk. If we have so many people committed, 10 people, 20 people that would like generators, if we could get a price break on that, if everybody, you know, is going in on them together. So that's what that sign-up sheet will be out there for. Please feel free to ask any questions. And again, if you have any insight on that, come to me, come to Dave, uh, and we can discuss that a little more. Cleaning supplies, you know, just for a variety of reasons, for bodily fluids, for, you know, spills, anything of that nature. So bleach, ammonia are two good ones, um, and they're not really going to expire. So fire extinguisher, gas, again, just good to have some gas on hand if we don't have access to those pumps. Um, say you can't drive to one, say they're shut off for some reason. You know, we've, we saw that last year, the, the gas shortage, the gas scare, people panicking. You know, that I think COVID was a little bit of a glimpse into this sometimes, just the way you saw people panic and hoarding. We don't want to encounter that again. So that is what we are meant to do right now is to take this time, take a deep breath, take a step back and say, how do we avoid that repeating itself? Yeah. Oh, Mike. <laughs> Sarah, we, uh, through some ministries, they had some wind-up radios okay. that they were sending overseas. Yes. Um, I don't know if that's available or around us. I'm sure it is. 
uh, and have cash on hand. Yes, I don't think I have. I think I have that in the car kit, so thank you. I think that's very important uh, with the home kits as well. And so just to skip down a little bit, the fireproof safe, um, if there's a flood, if there is a fire, you know, there's a lot of things that you're going to need if you were to ever have to start over that, you know, you can't just have everything on your phone. It is fantastic for the convenience we have right now, but just as a backup, store those emergency contacts, store emergency money, pictures of your home, your valuables, because I've heard a lot of people, there's floods, there's things that take their house, and the insurance doesn't cover it because there's no record of it existing. So taking pictures, having that binder in the safe is fantastic. Um, health information, passports, and just essentially think about anything you would need to start over. Any, any other additions or questions? About the water, um, I just saw a video of a ministry called the Bucket Ministry. I don't know if anybody's heard of it, familiar with it. They're, they go over to third world nations that don't have fresh water, and they, they take a bucket, and they use this thing. It's a, it's a filter from Sawyer. I just looked at it. It's like 20 some bucks for a filter. And you can take, I mean, they were taking water out of the Amazon River in mud puddles and filtrating it, and it was drinkable water. So um, that's something that's inexpensive. And they say if you clean them right, they'll last a long time. So. Wow. What was that? You said Sawyer? Sawyer. Sawyer filters. And Kathy gave me a little fun fact uh, right before we walked in was that for two, a family of four, for two weeks, you would need at the minimum 54 gallons of water to survive. So just to put that into perspective that you can't, just go out and buy all these jugs of water and have all that on hand. It's just not efficient. So thinking about a filter so that you can get water from anywhere and have that endless supply and not have to worry about that in that, in that moment. <laughs> Running as fast as you can. So, so me and Justin get our water for free from up in Mont Alto. They have like mountain taps. So yes. we just bought jugs off of Walmart, big gallon jugs. And we've drinking the water for probably three plus years. Okay. Every day. And it's wonderful. So maybe We actually located. taste the difference when we drink bottled water compared to that. Yes. <laughs> he was just like, do not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Is that wrong? Is that wrong? <laughs> I've definitely been in areas that it's clean enough. You know, you have spring water and it tastes beautiful. It tastes crisp. It tastes clear. It is so much better than water, any water you can buy. Oh. No, it tastes so good. Yes. So, you know, talking about that. Yes. Hold. Wait. Can you guys coordinate which side you're on here? But up up <laughs> McConnellsburg, there's a place there. As you go into McConnellsburg, the first exit, yeah. there's a place there where you can get drinkable water there as well. It's, it's free as well. It's like an old spring or mountain. Oh, perfect. So maybe if, you know, if you guys have just sharing that information amongst you, where some of these locations are at. If you're not sure of one, ask around. You know, we have two resources right there, and I'm going to look into that a little more as well. So if you have questions on that, we can certainly keep that conversation going. Anybody else? Okay. On to car kits. Highly recommend um, storing this in a large, either a flat Rubbermaid tote, or, you know, depending on what kind of car you have, uh, truck, whatever, however much room, you know, you can get one of the flat totes or you can get one of the, the thicker, taller ones. Storing everything in a tote because I've seen some people's cars and in the case of an emergency, you ain't going to find nothing in there. <laughs> Besides maybe some fast food wrappers and so, <laughs> or if you're like Sean, I found um, a dinner plate and the lid to the Keurig. Um, and a few pairs of clothes and, you know, <laughs> so you never know what you're going to find in some people's cars. So you want to have it in, um, just a very well known and established place that is specifically for that. For a car, it's recommended to prepare for about 24 to 48 hours. 
we've heard some stories just a couple years ago. Uh, there was some, um, a big jam on the turnpike right down in Breezewood, and people were stuck there for a couple days. It was it was pretty scary. And there were people, you know, uh, right by my home. They were taking their four wheelers to go down the turnpike to bring people supplies. It was it was scary. Uh, so just thinking about that, just some stuff to think about to have on hand. Again, cell phone charger, first aid kit is going to be super important. Um, small fire extinguisher, flares, tire gauge, uh, some tools, uh, tire repair kit. Um, who has jumper cables in their car? Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Again, uh, water or just that water bottle. Just keeping that filterable uh, water bottle on hand, some non-perishable food. A help sign is another one that not many people think of. You know, um, you place that in your car, something like that. That way, if you're in the middle of doing something, going to look for something, um, you know, maybe you're looking for some food or water, somebody knows to stop there. You can write a small message on it, whatever. Flashlight, gloves, just thinking about the climates you're in and the potential, you know, we have all four seasons in a day here sometimes. So <laughs> I do recommend packing warmer clothes, um, you know, things of that nature, your AAA card if you have one. If you don't have it, maybe thinking about investing in AAA, something of that nature. Small bills, coins, um, just some basic tools. And again, I would highly recommend you put a reminder in your phone to check this every six months. Check this once a year. And it being in your car, you're probably going to see it more often, but to be honest, I couldn't tell you the last time that I've checked mine. So what else have I forgotten? Again, there's a, a link at the bottom here for more exhaustive lists, but yes, yeah, so we'll have that online. Anybody have anything already in their car that I haven't included that you might think is, is pretty helpful? Candles. Candles. Hold up. I, li I lived in North Dakota for seven years, and this was a clear and present danger all the time in the wintertime. You had to have a survival kit in your back because if a blizzard kicked up and you were on the road, because there, you could be 50, 60 miles from a town, and you wouldn't make it to that town. So you could be snowed in pretty quickly. Um, guys out, you guys, Salt Lake City, so you know what a, a blizzard, look, we read what a blizzard is, we see what a blizzard is, we've never been in a blizzard before. It's unbelievable. Anyway. Um, so we would have coffee cans, regular Folgers coffee cans, and if you put a candle in that, it will amplify the heat of the candle. It could be survival, the, the, the moment of sur point of survival. Don't put matches in a survival kit. I'm not trumping you. Oh, because they get uh, wet. wet. They draw moisture. We live in a humid environment here. So get, you ever see one of the magnesium strikers? Those type of things, get one of those, you know, where you can start, get a little toilet paper, wad it up, strike it right on there. Magnesium comes off of it, light, light it right up. What's that? Toilet paper's real good. What's that? Vaseline, Vaseline cotton balls, yep, it'll help ignite it. Um, something else that you said, see, when, you know, we're talking about this, and we're like, what could happen in the United States? Well, go down to Kentucky. Or go online and look what happened to Kentucky. Then these guys, you know, when you're write, writing down uh, phone numbers, because I have loved ones that are missing, what's their phone number? I have no idea. So these are important. They're important things. But we think, not, you know, we're so insulated here with our problems that we can just go to Walmart and fix that problem. Maybe not so. Um, if something were to occur where we couldn't get have electricity just for a week, you're not going to get gas because it takes electricity to pump the gas out of the ground. Right? You're not going to be able to charge anything. There's a whole host of things. You're not going to have heat at home. Who just has electric heat in their house, right? So it is a good thing to plan. The Bible says, I'm going to bring some Jesus right in the middle of this. The Bible says that a prudent man sees a disaster and plans, but a fool does nothing. So if we're talking about this in church, maybe it's God setting us up for something. There are ten virgins, five are wise, five are not. We can have this side is wise, this side is not, sorry. I just chose one. So you know, I think maybe let's just listen, take it serious, pray about it, right? This is all information that you can pray about to say, yeah, I really feel like God's moving me in this area. 
a great storage container, things that we used to get because I was in the military, is old ammo cans. The military throws them away by the hundreds. You can buy one right now for $5 online. They have a rubber gasket, rubber seal in it, and they're perfect. They're waterproof. You can stick them in the ground for years, and it, they're all metal with a rubber seal. It won't rot. Um, I, used to, <laughs> I used to have a rocket launcher. Um, it, it was no, not right, the launcher itself, <laughs> but it's a pla it's a plastic <laughs> tube. You unscrew and you you get the rocket launcher out of that. You throw the tube away. The military makes them by the thousands. They're being used right now overseas, and they're just tossed away. But people, companies get those and sell those online. You can get one of those for about seven, eight dollars. Plastic, great rubber seal, and just throw it in the back of your car after you fill it up. It's a good item, and I have resources for all that stuff. Cool. Rock, uh, rock. Write that down. Rock, just, if, you, if you Google rocket launcher, <laughs> just Google rocket launcher case. <laughs> case, it's a case. <laughs> and you will go through 15 prepper sites, and mm -hmm. then you'll find the rocket launcher site. See what that does to your algorithms. <laughs> Who thinks we need to have just like a, a survival prep day, you know, to having the Boy Scouts and the, the Army guys and everybody and teaching us all this stuff that we've never thought of. Uh, the, the lists, the links have so much more than I have on this screen. But Epi, yes, it'll be on Facebook. Um, we will have that available for you. EpiPens are another really good one to have for a host of different reasons. Maybe just, re you know, whether you need one, somebody else needs one, uh, but it's, it, they're for more than just bee stings. So maybe do some of your own research on that. What else? Does anybody? Yes. Yeah, Mike. Wait, 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 wait. I'm a lifeguard, so I keep my CPR kit. CPR. There too. With first okay, with the mask yeah. and stuff in there, yep. Yeah. And then maybe we buy Epi pins in bulk so that one day we come in and everybody can yes. purchase. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, one more. Wait. Hold it. <laughs> My old job had us all uh, come for a meeting and they handed out Narcan too. Okay. I feel like that's a good thing to keep in your car. That's very good. Yeah. Narcan is for somebody who's overdosing. Yeah. Okay. So the, the scripture Dave just talked about, I had almost put that one in here, but I, I chose this instead. Luke fourteen twenty eight. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. And... At, at surface, at face value, you might think that that is specifically just about like, okay, if we're going to build something, we need a blueprint, we need to lay stuff out. But this, I want you to look at it just a little bit more deeply, that if there is some kind of emergency, what, what may be saved, what may not be saved, you know, do you lose everything? So I want you to just sit with that for a second. Have you ever sat down and truly calculated the cost of following Christ. And I'll make it easy for you because I don't love math. <laughs> following Christ will cost you everything. It will cost you your old life. When you leave, when you follow Jesus, you leave everything behind. You take nothing. So the thought of losing everything, the, the very, very small potential of losing everything shouldn't scare you. Why? Because that, that means that we are just that, that little bit closer to being with him. None of us are getting out of this world alive. None of us are taking any of our stuff with us. When Noah was on that ark, what did they take? What possessions did they take with them? We didn't, there are no details about that because they weren't important. They took animals and people. That is what was important. So, just again, just I really want you to shift that mindset, not to be scared by any of this, but everything in our life should be second to Christ. Amen. Um, okay, on to the next one here. So stocking the pantry. Now that you have your home stocked, you have your car stocked, you have your kids prepped with their emergency contacts, you know, maybe a little kit, a binder, a safe, 
all that stuff at home. Now we're going to, you know, you put on your own mask first. Now we're going to help others put on their mask. We're going to start to stock for the community. So I'm just calling it stock the pantry. And you want to do this at home, but this is what our plan is for here at TLC. So just like the shoe box, we're going to be encouraging donations kind of along this schedule. So you might see that in the announcement. You will see that in the announcements. And we'll have a little bit more information on where you're going to put those donations. So next month, starting food. So think of canned goods, dried, fruit, dried foods, um, rice, beans, things of that nature, non-perishables. So if you have an overabundance, I know canning is very, very, very hard work. If it is on your heart to share any of that hard work, the fruits of your labor, sowing those seeds into the church, that is, it is welcomed. It is, it is absolutely appreciated. So whatever it is that we have on this calendar, maybe buy one for the church, buy one for the home and slowly start to stock up that way. And this does not have to be done this month, next month. It does not have to be done by December. It does not, you know, New Year's Eve. Not, like, we're not, that's not what we're saying. But over the next year, this is our plan to start slowly, slowly stocking up. Like I said, we're going to do a uh, big five-pound bag of oats one month, big bag of rice one month. We're going to put those into the tractor supply five-gallon bucket, you know, something of that nature. Maybe start some shelves at home, a, a little area, whether it's a cellar, a basement, a garage, a room in your house that has this storage. And, and things are in one place. That way, everybody knows it. Everybody is on the same page. Anybody have any questions specifically? Kathy, do you have anything to add with, with this? We can go through some of the... I, I do think on, in November, let's just say we follow this grid. Mm -hmm. So that's also water purifiers. And maybe if everybody just brings a gallon, look, we'll be out of yeah. water in a, in a nanosecond. But it might be where we're helping another family who, I don't know, there was a tornado over in Wayne Castle. And there's nine, ten families displaced. Or there's some that are still in their home, but things are not working right. We would take, we would have delivery packages or or things of that nature. Also, while we're talking about this, there is somebody in here, and I've got pictures in my, in my mind, who has an organizational skill who would love to do this, and I will show you downstairs and where it will go and how it has to be labeled. Whoever has that label maker at home, it's probably you. <laughs> All right, so that's the first six. And then the last six. So as you can see, we, you know, I even put some stuff like games, pillows, comfort items for kids because, you know, if somebody loses everything, you know, they might need a puzzle to keep their kid busy while they're doing other stuff, rebuilding things. So it, it seems a little trivial, you know, it's, so it is at the end, but it's still of importance to keep people comfortable, safe. Foods, camping supplies, starter kits, cooking utensils, you know, what if you are cooking by fire? How are you going to do that? Do you have everything for that? Do you have everything to start a fire? Do you know how to start a fire? <laughs> Can't fire at Dave's. <laughs> Any questions from anybody here? No hands. Yes. Hey. Peanut uh, butter. Peanut butter. Pro tip from Pastor. I like that. I like that. Um, each one of these will will have a slide every month, and you can you'll have four to five weeks to bring something in, and we'll continue to build a pantry. This pantry is for people who are attending here and people in need that don't attend here. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the fun stuff. So just like Kathy said about somebody who has fantastic organizational skills. I, there's going to be a sign-up sheet, and you're going to see these um, the sign-up sheet sitting out there after church today, next couple weeks, signing up for something. So we have about six different categories here. If I've missed anything, if there's another department that you can think of, please bring that bring that to my attention. So in general, just a, a small layout that I had envisioned was 
if there is some kind, you know, say there's a hurricane, say that there's, there's places where there's wildfires and they all gather at a church, a school, something. If something like that were to happen here, I want, I'm going to jump down to administration, but I want a group of about four to six people out front. And those are our very organizational people. Uh, I'm sure there's an Enneagram number for that. Um, so I want about four to six people out there. We don't know how many people might come at once. So I want people taking names, almost like a sign-in sheet, taking accountability for who's here, who's entering through our doors, how many people, what do we have, kids, adults, teens, things of that nature, just keeping things fairly organized, signing people in. And then those people will be assigning uh, those families, those individuals to a team, a team leader. So that leader, you're going to be in charge of, you know, just, just in general keeping your group, we'll call it, uh, informed. If there's news, if, there, if you, know, you have to move for some reason, this spot isn't safe at this moment. We need to move. So your job is mainly just going to be to communicate, just to keep that communication open. Um, that is that is your main role, just taking charge and being able to lead. And there are many wonderful leaders in here, so there should not be any shortage. I have about six to ten spots on there for that. Um, so that would be phenomenal to have all of those spots filled. And if there's more than that, you know, two leaders to each team. First aid, super important. We're also going to have a sign up for that. Whether you have first aid CPR certification or you would like to be trained. We just need to know that kind of stuff. Who, how many people have an active CPR certification? Okay, not a ton, but some fantastic, yes. Yeah. So that is our goal. That sign-up sheet is gonna be out there if you are interested in it. I'm not telling you that you have to go sign up to be the first aid station if you have the CPR certification, but that is important for you to know for your own family's well-being. If there's an emergency and you can help somebody else out. Um, so nurses, doctors, anybody with a medical degree, heck, a Boy Scout, an electrician, I don't care if you feel comfortable providing that first aid care, whether it's, you know, wrapping people, putting bandages on, whatever it is, that is your time to shine, signing up for that committee. Supply distribution, that is kind of what I was thinking of down in the basement. All of these supplies that are going to be coming into us. I want, I would love for them to stay organized. And then the, the sign-in sheets that people, as people are coming in, the purpose of that will also be shared with the supply team because I want to make sure that things are equal. There's no hoarding. There's no fighting. There's no, you know, this person got 10 of this thing and this person only got one or there's none left now. So just, ra you know, rationing things out for the greater good of everybody, just making sure things are equal. On to security communication. Uh, there's about four to six spots on the sign-up sheet for that. And that's just the minimum that I would like to see for this. And it's just to keep people safe, to dispute any problems. You know, you have a bunch of people coming together during really high-stress times. What's the likelihood that there could be an encounter, an argument? You know, something of that nature or something, a threat, trying to get into our safe haven here. So that's the importance of that. But also communication, I would love you guys on the same team because if you have any experience with radios, communication, satellites, things of that nature, whatever information you guys can communicate together just to make sure we are getting the correct information, that everybody is kept safe, and it just, it's filtered. You guys receive it, you know, and then filter it put it in lay terms so that it's dispersed to the leaders and then it's communicated appropriately. The other one I have was some child care. We have no idea, like I said, what if parents need to go out and look for jobs? What if parents need to go out and rebuild something? What if parents are, you know, downstairs organizing? We need you guys who are, you know, we have a phenomenal uh, kid center here. So, if that is your gift, we, we need plenty of those because, you know, for every two adults, there's four to six children, <laughs> two, to, two to six children. 
Um, so just keeping them occupied, safe, and accounted for. So on these sign-up sheets, people can uh, sign up and maybe parentheses, they can say anything or childcare or so good I at have admin. Specific groups here. This one, first and foremost, team leaders. There are six spots there. If if it runs out of spots and you're still interested, just put it on the back and just right next to it what which one you're talking about. But there's a few pages here. So you're just going to put your name, your phone number, and your email. That way we have that point of contact. And once we get these filled, I would, I would love for these to be filled with all everybody here from TLC. We know the ins and outs of the church. We have the best interest of our church, our ship, um, at heart. This will be opened up to the public. You know, if there's other nurses, doctors, we would love for their input, you know, to be on the same page with us. But I would really love for those positions to be filled by all of us. So after these positions are filled, um, I will do, we'll figure something out, but get every, whether it's all the teams together here at once and then just break out into different groups. So that way you can have your own meeting. I want you guys to communicate, design your own plan. Hey, let's come up with about four different scenarios, hurricane, flood, fire, COVID, something along those, those lines. Hey, this is what we would do in this situation. This is how we want to carry out our responsibility. So you would have your own meeting, and then you would meet maybe um, every six months, you know, just twice a year to make sure that plan is still applicable and it's the most efficient plan and, and would be the most helpful. So it's not, it's not a big responsibility until the day, you know, you have to do your due diligence to prepare for whatever. But again, you have to think about what your gifts are. Your gifts are going to come very naturally. So it's not something to be pressured or scared about. But the day that moment comes is going to be your time to shine. So it's not something that's going to require something of you every month, every week. It's not something to, you know, to dread a responsibility like that. But it can, it can really come in handy and, and save the day. Anybody have any input on that? Any, any categories that I've forgotten? Anything else that might be beneficial? Good? Okay. So on to CPR training sign-up. Like I said, uh, we have a sign-up sheet for that. And, and depending on the amount of people, yes. we'll decide when the class is, whether it's in November, but we'll have it here so that you can come in. Yep, we so need people no... to sign up. I won't do it for two. I'll right. send you to a location, but I'll bring a specialist here if I've got eight, ten people. I think I have about 30 to 40 spots on here. So hopefully we have that many people interested. I think I saw four hands raised. So that <laughs> leaves for a lot of room. I think it is super beneficial to have that training. Uh, whether, you know, you just have kids at home. What, what happens if they choke? What happens if, so just so you're prepared for your own home, if nothing else. And so we're going to have that sign up, super important. And then we'll maybe take like a little bit of a, a census or get a feel for when that training might occur, whether it's November or January, whether it'll be here, whatever. So there's nothing set in stone yet. Just if you are interested, please sign up for that. Highly encourage. Um, and then again, there will be, a sign up for the generators as well. Microphone. CPR trained. Actually, like what's the age uh, of it. Sorry. I don't know that one for sure. Does any of the nurses, Courtney? Do you? I would assume it's like. I mean, lifeguards have it at like fifteen, sixteen. Correct. So mm -hmm. for yeah, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So. I don't think there's... Well, you know, we'll look into that. Yeah. I, I, 12, why not? Okay. I can, I can definitely look to but see if there is I, a... I limit. believe it, for anyone who is willing and able, um, they can be. Yeah. Because I know in fifth grade at elementary school, it was a part of the curriculum back oh, wow. then. It's not anymore, unfortunately. No minimum there, age. This They've, just in, there is no minimum age. Spoken. <laughs> Any other comments there? Okay. Oh, there's, there's a piece in here that I, 
I think I touched on it earlier that I did not put in the slides because it's still kind of to be decided, but Kathy and I had discussed earlier. Say there is a natural disaster that happens. Say um, TLC turns into the hub for whatever reason. <laughs> if we will, we will have this posted and in the event that something happens, somebody will even probably post uh, a piece of paper on the door so if you have any questions, if you come, you know, it'll say what time people are going to be here. But in the event that something happens before noon that day, 12 a.m. to 12 p.m., natural disaster strikes, we will meet here at 630, as always. Everything, church will be open. If you are a group, in a group, if you're a leader of some aspect, I would recommend in your group you discuss, hey, we'd like to get here at 5:30, if possible. Uh, that way, you can maybe even just prepare just a tiny bit. Hey, let's regroup, meet together. This is what has actually happened. So, in the event something happens before noon, we would meet here at 6:30 p.m. In the event that something happens after noon, what did we say? Eight or 12 the next day? Yeah, we'll be open. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have somebody here at 12 the minimum. Yep. But like I said, if, if you have any questions about it, if you come here, it will be posted. So we will. But generally, anything that will happen here will happen at 6.30. 6.30. So if you get here at 6, you'll, you can be in the parking lot. But yeah. we'll be here at 6.30, and you can trust that. Yes. Amen. Okay. So next meeting, that date is to be decided, but it will be, we're shooting for October and that will be open to the community. So what are you supposed to do next year? What we would love for is tell your friends, tell the rest of the people in, in the community, in Greencastle, in Waynesboro, in McConnellsburg, Mercersburg, whatever it is, tell them, hey, this is what we're doing at our church. We feel very, very strongly about it right now. We would love for as many people to be equipped and knowledgeable about this. That way, everybody can work together. So encourage people to come. If anybody wants that CPR training, you know, that's going to be open to the public, that sign-up sheet. So uh, we would love to just be able to get those resources out to people. And, and how can you help? Go home today. Let it, let it sit with you. What are my gifts? What would I be best suited for? Talk to your family about it. Ask God about it. Pray on it. Let, let him tell you what that is for you, how you're supposed to play a part in all of this. Any, any questions? Oh, Rachel has one. Wait. You, oh, you go. Oh, I thought go, you were telling me go. to wait. <laughs> you wait. Go. I guess my question is about the purpose for the community. Is the meeting, is the purpose for the community community meeting because I can see other churches being very interested in it so is the purpose for us as TLC to equip other churches to be able to be their own hub or is the purpose of the community meeting for them to join our hub does that make sense because I, I think it would be in my mind, I think it would be more effective if we equip them to create their own hub. Yes. Because when you were saying about like the leader, the when you had the slide up there about the six mm -hmm. different categories that you would love to see, you know, that filled by us. Like I believe that that's very doable and possible. That the next step is okay. We're going to empower you, you know, and then maybe you need to add like a seventh um, category where then we have a liaison from TLC that communicates with other hubs. Because I, I, not that I'm, not that I don't trust other people, but I don't trust other people. <laughs> like, you know, like, no, and I'm just thinking like kids, when I saw childcare, like, I'm just thinking like, oh, like, I, mm, yeah, we're going to have kids involved. Yeah, like, our hub, our leadership, empower you to create your hub, yes. your leadership. We have a liaison that communicates with all the hubs. Mm -hmm. that, now, does I, that make sense? I absolutely agree with what you're saying. And so I think that's still, that is what the end goal would be, Rachel. 
And it's still just so open-ended right now because we don't know who else would be interested. If there's somebody from other churches interested, we would say, absolutely, let me show you. I will give you all of this. Please, we would love to partner with you on this. Equip your churches with it. And there's actually many resources I found when researching all this of how to equip yourself as a church, as a school, as a hub for this. So uh, I would be happy to... If there are others interested that come during that community meeting, then that would spark that conversation. And for anybody who doesn't have a church, then they know what other churches are available during a time like that. So I absolutely love, yes. love that point. As super good insight. I think on the fly, as this is developing, mm-hmm. that this is also a time where you can have bulk purchases, for instance, you can pick up an EpiPen for $10 or, you know, or where we'll have Berkey containers that you can pick up because we were able to buy more, people can come. So this is a, a, it's a supply or people sign up or we can say if we get 20 people to sign up, this is what it will cost. Are you interested? The big thing I think we have here, Sarah, is as in our church with so many people out, my, my, my hope is, is that this is constructive. It's a public service to you. It's a spiritual service to others. Um, I, I hope that you'll share it on Facebook, um, share this message, even share it to people that you know aren't here today because you can't do a, this service message every week and even understand what it is. We'll just make sure that it gets out so that people can see what we're trying to develop so we, we can do this one time and then do it for the public. And Rachel, perfect, where we can send you out or send somebody else out from here and yes. give them the same information to our Lutheran friends and our you know Pentecostal friends and our Baptist friends. But um, I think this needs to be implemented everywhere. Yeah. So if, if you have friends at other churches say, hey, this is what we did, just to think about it, maybe come to this meeting, hear what we're doing, and then... We can make this happen at your church as well. We would love, you know, for this to expand. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Anything? I don't think we have to have everything, but we can partner with people who have something. Mm-hmm. So if we partner with another church that has a good existing closed bank, right, then we at least know where to go for that. Um, And I think that's going to come up when we start developing our teams of administration to be able to reach out to six, seven other churches in town and say, this is what we're doing. What do you bring to the table so we can help our community? Because this is about being our brother's keeper. It's not about me huddling down and saving food for how long? Three months for yourself? And then what are you going to do? Is everybody else dead? Or is somebody banging on your house to steal your food? Or are you, are you willing to shoot someone to save your food? Or we just bring it all together into a community and when it's gone, it's gone. And we trust God, right? And, and partner with, you know, your neighbors on this. What if your neighbor has a generator and you have a garden? So that's the importance of just making this a conversation, opening this up to the community. Because, again, what, yeah, are you preparing for 24 hours, seven days, three months, you know, go back to COVID. Everybody was on lockdown. Nobody ever expected that to happen. And we had no idea how long. It was starting to get pretty scary. I don't need sunscreen. It's will be a tan by tomorrow. <laughs> Just don't fall in the sleep. Fall asleep in the pool. <laughs> what, what other questions do you guys have? Yes. Hold on. Wait for the microphone. It's back there. I have a question, and this is for now. Okay. Does the church have a blood pressure cuff, a stethoscope, a um, O2 spirometer for Mm. oxygen, and stuff like that for now? What if somebody in this congregation would happen to drop over with a heart attack right now? Do we have... The equipment, I have a stethoscope or a blood pressure cuff in my car, but do we have one here in the church in case those of us that have stuff are not here? I just had, that just came to my mind. Who has that information? Uh, The shopping list is starting right now. (laughs) (laughs) 
And just to have an EpiPen on hand is a, a very smart thing for us, so you can expect that. But you see how literally unprepared we are. And it's not because of ill will. It's just because um, we're not getting that leadership. So I feel like God is setting us up. I don't ever think he wastes your time. And that's what's really important. If you're here and you're like, I want to hear a little bit more about Jesus. Well, you are. He's preparing all of us for somebody's need or even your very own. So please hear it as um, a, a generous gift. Um, Question. I know we partner with Samaritans all the time. Mm -hmm. Is somebody available to talk with them? Yes. Okay. Okay. I mean, because they're always Johnny on the spot mm -hmm. in disasters. That'd be a wonderful person to have, and we can implement that into the communication team. Again, a, a liaison for that. So that would be Brogan Martin. We're already, this church, the Life Center, is called a lighthouse for Samaritan's Purse. If there's an impact, Samaritan's Purse would use this as one available hub in this area. They would make this their strategic planning area. So we signed up for that years ago, probably six years ago. I think we're good. I want to thank Sarah for that wonderful information. I mean, it, it, it is um, beautiful. Well done. I just want to talk to you real quick, and where are we at on time? Okay. Uh, before you leave today, and we're going to take communion, I have a small video that I want to show you. Last week, if you weren't here, you'll probably have to make some sense out of what we're doing. We've been on a, a beeline from February sharing the story of this magnificent love. And then our hope was to get you to be able to share it with others. And so last week we talked about uh, the good news and how you share it. And on our Tuesday night classes, we're giving people these cards. This is called Jesus at the Door. This is a wonderful, wonderful, easy, anointed tool to literally go through and ask somebody if they would like to receive the spirit would they have the, when they pray um, um, that you ask the question do you have you ever seen this picture and do you pray and they say oh no this is Jesus at the door and and you see how the doorknob is on the inside and when you so that means you have to open it do you pray and they say yeah, he says, are you praying through the door or have you opened the door and let Jesus in so he's with you? You're not praying through the door. And that's where the conversation starts. And on the back of it is a very easy to go through. Um, I mean, it's so easy. You, I think what scares us, we're such conservative, uh, middle class I'm not giving you an evangelistic tool. I am not corralling you and making you go out and proselyte other people. You don't know how to share your faith because you've not been trained to share your faith. And so we are obligated and also indentured to show you how to do that. And so this is a tool where you can sit down, read through this, watch these testimonies, read through this, and for the first time, Invite somebody to receive the spirit of God, which lives so richly in you in a very concise and very simple way. Ask them, would they like to, would they like to start following a new direction? The card does a, a, a great job of it. Again, if you're not on our Facebook TLC page, please follow us. Please look at the stuff that we post. It is, a, there's a lot of work that goes into it, but let, why don't you just take a minute and watch these testimonies and these people, the world is hungry for Jesus, but there are no laborers. There's a lot of believers, but nobody's out and able to share the story. So please go ahead and watch this video and uh, we'll take communion. I don't even know how to tell you how this makes my heart beat. I feel like church is not what it should be, but what it can be is us helping people find the way to truth. And the beauty of um, you introducing people to Jesus is the fire that's in their heart as new lovers of Christ actually keeps your fire burning. If you feel like your fire's gone out, 
that's probably the reason why. I'm telling you that no matter what we do in life, no matter how much we give and we don't, we are not helping people find the truth of who he is. We're just not living our life the way the Christian followers of Christ would live their life. You're a disciple. And, and, and he says, go, therefore, and make disciples. And I think that's where we got stagnant. I think that's where we got hung up. And we've held these classes. We've gone through reading the Bible. To get people together right now is like herding cats. It's the hardest thing you've ever done. There's like a mass exodus everywhere. I invite you to ask yourself, do you want to be the person that helps somebody find their way out of their captivity? You don't know how to do it. And we're teaching you. We're giving you tools. And we're here again on Tuesday night. Do you want to know what's weird? Other churches are coming to our Tuesday night meeting and saying, I wish our church was doing this. No, it's just a crazy thing. A guy just shows up on Tuesday out of nowhere. It wasn't happenstance. God is calling his children in. And he's saying, I need you now. Laborers in the harvest. Praying. I am praying. And more than ever, I'm sure of it. There's a scripture in Jeremiah 16, 16, and we're going to take communion. Jeremiah is crying to Israel, repent, turn back, repent, turn back. What's about to happen is going to be unbelievable. And uh, there's this scripture in Jeremiah 16, 16, that's tattooed to my heart. And it is that he will send out first the fishermen to get the people to come in. And then after that, he's going to send out the hunters. And because he wants his bride back. He wants what belongs to him back to him. So you are those fishermen. And then after the fishermen comes the hunter. And a hunter is far more aggressive than a fisherman. Amen? So when you come up today, if you be so bold as to take this, and you don't know what it is. Some of you don't even know what it's about. But then go online and take a look at it. Have you ever wanted to share your faith with somebody across the table or even at Walmart? Or if you're talking to somebody and you say, do you, you know, do you pray? You have the small guidelines to help you to be able to share your faith and pray for them right away. These people are born again in a day and three days later praying for somebody else. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to receive the spirit. And that's the time that we're in. So as we prepare... And play that video again. We're going to take communion. Please join us. Um, come to the table. When you come up, I pray that you will grab a card or many cards for you who have an evangelist, uh, evangelistic heart. But it's, uh, it's time. It's harvest time. It's prep time. It's go time, team. It's go time. You don't have to look at me as a pastor. Just look at me as a fellow sister in Christ who's asking you to help us get the harvest in. Get the ark full. Get the ark full. Amen?